to the Without the Bank podcast, where you and I are going to talk about all things IBC, the business of banking, utilizing money correctly, and how it will help you grow your business and your wealth. No fluff here, folks. Let's get right to the point. And today's point is how to utilize the life insurance policy for retirement. I have had a lot of questions on this. So I am going to talk about that in today's podcast. And so I'm going to actually join two books together today. I'm going to talk about Farming Without the Bank, and I'm going to talk about Life Without the Bank because of the fact that I talk about retirement in both of those books, but both of those retirement scenarios look very different. And there's a reason for that. So first of all, before I get into all of that, if you are going to retire on rental income from land, that rental income is going to be passive income. You are going to pay federal and state, not Social Security and Medicare. So here's the big thing. When we retire, if we put money in a 401k or an IRA, that comes to us as an ordinary income. Everything, you're paying federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare, you're paying tax on all of those dollars. And there really are three different income tax buckets per se. Now I'm going to call them buckets, but we want to get to the no income tax bucket. So there's ordinary income tax, there is passive, which is just federal and state, and then there's the no income tax, which is self explanatory. And I really talk more about this in Life Without the Bank, but when you're in retirement and you have income coming in, you want that income to be in the lowest tax bracket, right? You don't want to be paying taxes on a lot of your income because you don't have a lot of write-offs. Your house is most likely paid for, the kids are gone, you don't have business expenses anymore. And so now what do we do? Now we're going to pay the highest taxes and guess what? We don't have any write-offs. So we want to move as much money now as we can into a tool that's going to allow us to have this no income tax payment, right? We can use that money, but we don't have to pay income tax on it, which is what life insurance does during retirement. If we use it correctly, we do not have to pay tax on that income or that money. Okay, now a lot of you out there might be saying, well, Mary Jo, that's what a Roth IRA does. And it is. A Roth IRA will grow income tax-free. So any money you use at retirement is not going to be taxable. However, a Roth IRA, you've heard me say it before, a Roth IRA is not liquid. Like life insurance. A Roth IRA, you have risk, no guarantees. And so even though the back end of it is awesome, the during our living years and our younger years, we don't have the flexibility and the liquidity to use that money. Now, if we look at what we need to or how we need to use life insurance, okay, you can use it for whatever you want. I just went over that in a past podcast. So you can use it for absolutely anything that you want, but it's how you use it that is the key here. And let me just give you an example of this accountant I do not like very much. He is a local guy to me. And, well, I'll refrain. I'll refrain from saying anything bad about him or calling him names. But he thinks he knows everything, right? And so he... I, I did that whole life insurance thing and it didn't work. Well, first of all, he didn't do whole life. He did universal life because guess what? He's an accountant. He's not a life insurance expert. So he didn't know what he was doing. And instead of borrowing the money, he took it out. Well, then it's going to be income if you made money. And so he was upset because it didn't work the way he wanted it to work. Well, it's because he didn't know what you were doing. So there are experts, right? Professionals who don't understand it. And this is super, super important. If you are going to have money in your policy during retirement, 
and you are going to use that money to live. There are ways to utilize that money. We can either take out what we put in, okay? What we put in is called the basis. We can take out the basis, income tax-free, and then we can borrow against the growth. And the borrowed money, yes, it has to be paid back and it's accumulating interest. But because it's borrowed money, it's not income. If we take out the basis, it's not income. Now, this is all based on if the policy does not MEC. If it becomes a modified endowment contract, a MEC, this rule does not apply. Okay? In the life insurance world, if it does not mech, it is first in, first out. Meaning, what you put in, you get to take out first. You don't touch the growth until after you've taken the basis. Okay? Now, in the book, if you look at the Farming Without the Bank book, we have an example with Don. He's borrowing $75,000 a year. He is not paying the interest and he is not paying the principal, but he is continuing to pay his $22,100 premium. Now, if you look at his numbers, his cash value continues to grow until about age 79. Then he actually, his cash value starts to decrease. But from 66 to 78, his cash value continued to grow. Well, A, he's paying $22,100 in premium. So it's going to take a while for that cash value to start going the opposite direction. But even at 85, he still has $2.1 million of cash value and $3.4 million of death benefit even though he's borrowing $75,000 a year, he does not need to pay this back. He does not need to pay the interest, okay? It's all gonna work out just fine if what we do is go to the life insurance company and say, okay, Donna is 65 years old. He wants to know how much money he can borrow from 65 to say 95. And then his cash value would be zero, right? The downside of these life insurance policies is you can outlive them. You can live longer than what we have cash value. Now, if we look at life without the bank, it's a little bit different story. Because in Don's case, he had $2.1 million is what we were looking at for cash value when he started borrowing against it. In life without the bank, in the retirement scenario, We are looking at $911,000 of cash value to start out with, and we're going to borrow $50,000 a year. So we're borrowing a lot more money with a lot less cash value every single year. So immediately the cash value starts to go down, but it's not going down by the $50,000, right? Year one, we borrowed $50,000, cash value only went down eleven. dollars Year two, only 12. I mean, we did not hit $50,000 of cash value decrease until age 87, year 47. So we went almost 20 years, we went 21 years before the cash value decreased by the same 50,000 we were borrowing. But again, in that scenario, Our cash value is going to go down every year, not continue to go up. We didn't have as much cash value. We were borrowing a little bit more. Now, I can tell you with my client, I have quite a few clients that are 55, 60, 65 years old. And what we're doing with them is saying, okay, what does the illustration look like? And how much money can you use every year If we take out the basis, then borrow against cash value versus borrowing against cash value from day one and never paying it back. No, I'll tell you, it really depends on the circumstance. 
I have some clients who are going to be taking out the basis and borrowing cash value growth because they're going to get more money per year for a longer period of time. The reason why we have to do it that way is because they're not planning to pay premiums. They don't have any income coming in. Their businesses are closed. They quit working, right? We don't have the income to continue to pay the premium. If we have somebody that is a farmer and they have land rent, and now all of a sudden they've got this land rental income, every single year that they can use to pay premium, or maybe they can use that to pay the interest only on those loans, it's going to be a very different scenario of how we utilize that money. What if you have money in an IRA or a 401k and you did both? You did life insurance and you did the 401k and the IRA. Well, then we might use the 401k money now, while we can, if we still have write-offs at 65, and then we're going to use the whole life insurance later or vice versa. Maybe we use life insurance now. I have one client right now that she's retired and we're using, the plan was to use the life insurance money until she turns 65 because she's not 65 yet. So she worked at a job long enough that she could retire from that job, but she has another job. So now to supplement income, we can use the life insurance policy, either borrow against it or take it out, doesn't matter. Then at 72 and a half, she's going to be forced to take money out of her 401k, forced. She has to, she doesn't have a choice. So then that income is going to come to her. So we might not need the money from the life insurance policy. Either way, if she borrows money from the life insurance policy or takes money out of the life insurance policy, it's not income. Many people are putting money into a 401k doing nothing but causing some major issues at retirement because we don't have the write-offs. So now we have to take it at 72. Life insurance company doesn't care if you ever use it or how you use it, right? Or if you pay it back or anything like that. So I wish that I could just say, okay, this is exactly how you do it. But it really depends on what do we have for income? Do we have rental properties? Or you may have a business to sell, or you may have property to sell. Well, now we have all of that income coming to us. So we really need to figure out what is the best way to do that, to eliminate some of those taxes. This is what you can't do. You cannot come to me at 63 and 65 years old and say, Mary Jo, I have all of this money in 401ks. How do I get it out without paying taxes now? You can't. I can't do that for you. We can't roll it over to a whole life policy. That's not possible. You have to take it out. So if you want income tax-free retirement... You have to have the policy that's set up correctly, but you need to start moving that money or stop contributing to that 401k and IRA now so that you can build another system and that money is there for you to use income tax-free. Again, the only downside of the life insurance policy is that like an IRA, like a 401k, you could run out of income. Now, it's never going to go down according to the market, right? Because it's not going to go up and down with the market because it's all guaranteed. So we know by running an illustration what we're going to have. But that means that you have to save a lot to make sure that we've got enough money. If you are 40-some years old today, let's say you're 45 years old and you want to retire at 65, you're going to need $3 million to do so, if not more. And that's with a 4% inflation. So the one thing that we need to consider is if you're looking at retirement, you need to consider inflation in there. And what does that look like? How much do I need? I have a calculator to figure it all out. It can be very depressing, (laughs) I just did this for a client and she said, okay, I'm going to go and cry now. (laughs) Because it is very, very 
overwhelming when you start putting in inflation and what things are going to cost. Even if you're 65 today, and if you live to 95, that's 30 years. What is inflation going to do to the dollar? If you're renting property out and you say, son and daughter, this is what I need for rental income because this is what mom and I need to live today. Well, that's what you need to live today. That doesn't mean that's what you're going to need to live in 20 years from now. So now everybody's rental income is going to have to go up with inflation. Why not just sell the land at that price so that we've got something in exchange for it, right? Or do a contract for deed or do a lease to own or something for heaven's sake. So we've got some ownership, but they're going to pay for you to live And then when you die, they have to buy it again. That does not make sense to me. And I'm the -the off-the-farm kid. Remember that. If my brother had to rent it from my parents and then buy his share of my stuff out, what? So he just bought it twice? I mean, my grandpa is still alive, and I think he's 96, 97. I forget. He just had a birthday. My mom could live a very long time. Her family lives well into their 90s. Well into their 90s. My grandma just passed away at 88. My dad's side of the family, there's not longevity there. <laughs> He's going to beat them all if, if he goes another couple years. I mean, if we're looking at longevity and you say, well, you need to, you need to pay for mom or dad to live forever, What? Come on, let's think about that. Can we use this life insurance as retirement to supplement the income? There's so many different ways to do it depending on your circumstance, depending on where else you have money, depending on if you have land, if you have a business, you have rental properties. What do we have going on, right? All of those things are going to matter. But if you're saying, all I want is my life insurance policy for retirement, My friends, you are going to need a lot, millions of dollars, not a million dollars. I mean, think about even if people today will say, oh, I'll I'll take a million bucks and live fantastically. A million dollars today? Think about it. If it costs you $100,000 to live today, that's only 10 years. Not even because you're going to have to pay taxes on that income if you put it in the wrong spot, right? A million dollars with no taxes is 10 years. A million dollars with taxes, not 10 years of income. Today, even if you said, I only need 50,000 to live today. Well, what? that's going to get you 20 years. And in 20 years, 50,000 is not going to buy you what is buying you today. A million dollars is a drop in the bucket in today's world. Because we have to look out for retirement. We can't just look at what we're doing today and think that it's going to stay the same. The government keeps printing money like it's water. Inflation is huge right now. And I don't see it stopping. Let's just keep giving people money. It's going to cost somebody. And that somebody is you. All of us, as long as we live, are going to feel the effects of this. So we need to consider all of those factors. So the moral of the story, you can take out the basis if it doesn't mech, and then you can borrow against the growth. Or you can borrow against all of it. But as you get older, we need to sit down and talk about those things and how that's going to look. Don't ask me how that's going to look when you're 45 or you're 50 or you're 55 and you're 10 years away from retirement. My goodness, look at 2020. That's one year. Turns everybody upside down on their head. People go bankrupt, lose businesses. Yes, you want to prepare and we need to look at how much you may need during retirement. And when I say need during retirement, I'm not saying how much you need at retirement. Oh, at retirement, I need to have $4 million saved up. No, I'm saying how much are you going to need every year during retirement with inflation? 
that will then figure out how much we need to save and have at retirement. Okay, most advisors are saying, well, you need a million dollars or you need $2 million. Okay, but what does that give me during retirement with inflation? And how much do I get to use every year after I pay taxes on it? And we don't know where the tax brackets are going to go. We need to be putting as much money into these life insurance policies as we can So we have that pool of money for the zero income tax bucket when we retire. Funding it now and being able to use it is huge, 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 huge. So you are going to have what you need at retirement and you're going to have what you need today to borrow against it. Okay, I hope that that made sense And that that answered the question of how do I use it for retirement? I probably left you with more questions than answers, which is typically, (laughs) that's typically what happens because there's no cookie cutter way to do any of this. It is very much aligned with what you have going on. Here's one thing that I've recently had a conversation with a client is letting them know that at retirement, the life insurance policy is not the end all. This is not the only place that you should be looking to put your money for retirement, okay? We can create income tax-free retirement for you. We can create a pool of money. I can't stop inflation. I can't stop taxes. You should always be looking at what can I do to create cash flow? Cash flow is king, What can I, do I need rental property? Should I buy some land? Very much like what we just did. We purchased land. So A, I don't have neighbors today, but B, in 25, 30, 35 years from now, when I say, you know what? I maybe want to slow down because I'm not going to retire. I won't retire. I had three days off, you guys. And by day number four, I was pretty bored. Like, I can't do it. I had, like, for three days, I was busy. Day number four, not so busy. And I thought I was going to lose my mind. And I had to start, like, doing some work. (laughs) Reading emails, whatever. I was just bored. Okay, I'm not going to retire, but I am going to slow down. And what can I do to continue to have income to do that? Cash flow rental properties, whatever. So if I buy this land, then now I can develop it in 25 years. And I don't care if I have neighbors because I may have to move back to town anyway because I can't keep up removing snow, right? Maybe I can't keep up with the yard. We have a massive yard. And so that gives me opportunity in the future. We have to think about how are we going to create cash flow for retirement? I got a little off track there, but you know what I'm saying? It is very important to be thinking about other things besides just saving a pool of money. And there are people like Robert Kiyosaki that talk about real estate. You could start a business and then sell the business, right? You could buy property with investors. It doesn't just have to be you. So many people say, well, I can't afford it. Well, maybe you can't afford all of it yourself, but there's investors. You can do it that way. Where there is a will, there is a way. We just have to think outside the box. There are storage unit opportunities. You don't have to have rental properties. You can rent storage units. You can rent land out just to have people park their campers and their boats there. I mean, there is an opportunity at every single corner. We just have to open our eyes to see it. And yes, it's going to be a risk. But guess what? It's a risk not having enough money in savings as well for retirement. I go into our local, I went into Walmart yesterday morning and it was Sunday morning, recording this on a Monday. (laughs) I went into Walmart and it was every single person in there was, well, not every person, shouldn't generalize like that. I would say 90% of the workers that I seen were over 70 years old. 65 plus. It was crazy. They 
are not most likely working at Walmart because they're bored. They're working at Walmart because they need to have the income. Medicare went up on them. Like it is absolutely crazy to think that, or they have their money in the market and the market crashed. And so they're concerned about that. The cost of living went up. My gosh, you try to build a deck today? The cost of lumber is astronomical. We went to get steel the other day so my husband can build himself a welding table. $400 for an eight by three welding table or two, eight by two, whatever it was. It was ridiculous. The guy said steel's gone up 300%. Now you're living on a fixed income and you're needing to fix your deck. You're needing to repair something in your house. Buy doors, buy doorknobs, whatever. How are you going to afford that on a fixed income? We have a choice to create passive income or to go work for our income. Passive income, land rent, apartment rent, rentals for anything, anything rental income, selling a business. You can do a contract for deed to sell something to somebody. So that's income every single year. Tons and tons of opportunities out there. Those are going to be super important along with the life insurance policy. But we need to be putting as much in the policy as we can to have enough for retirement. Okay, that was a super long podcast. And I try not to go, I try not to go this long, but apparently I have a lot to say on this subject. So let me know if you have any questions about any of that. Or if there was something I maybe did not answer that you want answered, I am happy to do that. You can always email me at maryjo at without the bank. If you have farming without the bank and you have not gotten life without the bank, then make sure that you get that one as well because it also has the retirement strategies in there and more of your 401k IRA stuff. So either way, you can get them at farmingwithoutthebank.com or you can go to wealthwithoutthebank.com and get them there. Okay, folks, that's all I have for you today. You have a absolutely fantastic rest of your week, and we'll see you in the next podcast.